my earliest memories of my father bringing me down to, to Monropo Beach and, and teaching me how to find turtle eggs, how to be around turtles without scaring them off and, and things like that. Um, and so I grew up in the, the area and virtually every summer, you know, have been on the beach enjoying the turtles. I'm Dr. Cole Limpus. Um, I'm the Chief Scientific Officer for the Aquatic Threatened Species Unit within the um, Department of Environment and Science. And one of the major divisions within the department is the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. And I'm part of that uh, system of, of conservation of species and landform within the, the department. Well, Mon Repo as a, uh, an area, I mean, it's been part of my life. Uh, for my whole life. In um, 1979, people wanted to have a, a cash flow for communities out of turtles. And the usual way of having a cash flow was to harvest them, either the turtles or their eggs and sell them. Wherever that was occurring, it was not sustainable and the turtle populations would be severely depleted as a consequence of it. I, I suggested that we needed to try and develop an alternate approach uh, for um, managing turtles so that there could be a, a economic value to the district economy without being detrimental uh, to the, the turtle population. So we were doing a lot of research, looking at uh, the sorts of things that were disturbance factors to the turtles, things that would um, reduce nesting success, things that would cause failure of, of hatching and, and those sorts of things. And so we proposed um, a, an ecotourism around turtles with some quite specific guidelines that came out of our research. Initial intent of this, of course, as I said, was to create an, an economic value to the district community. In uh, 1978, I attended a uh, meeting of the International Union for Conservation of Nature uh, Sea Turtle Specialist Group Management Committee. Um, at that meeting in, in um, uh, Toronto, in Canada, the chairman um, introduced some results of new research that had just been published that uh, identified freshwater turtles and terrestrial turtles in Europe. The, te the sex of the, the hatchlings was determined by the temperature of the nest, not by sex chromosomes to know that we had a huge variation in sand temperatures on our beaches from New South Wales up to North Queensland. It could have some quite significant consequences. That, that next summer, we actually began some systematic incubation of eggs under controlled temperatures. Our group was one of the first two labs in the world to, to demonstrate that marine turtles have this temperature dependent sex determination where the temperature of the nest determines what sex the hatchlings are and um, that uh, this is a, 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 an issue that has to be worried about as you manage your beaches. As we get into around about uh, 1990, we start to get the ideas of climate change and particularly global warming um, coming out of the, the global scientific community and we already had the knowledge that, hey, we're going to have a problem if the, the environment keeps warming. So we've now got a situation where we've got beaches that are excessively warm and we're not getting enough males. And also with excessive warmth, we get reduced hatch success. So do we sit back and, and let the turtles just die out? Our decision is no. We're looking for solutions uh, for how can we manipulate the sand temperatures so that we can maintain populations uh, secure until the, the global governments correct the, the climate change issue. The data we've collected on sand temperature over the years, you can see very clearly that when you get heavy rain, sand temperature drops. This is a, a control site where we don't have any artificial rain um, and the sand temperature down at the depth of the eggs uh, will be about two degrees warmer 
than um, the sand uh, underneath where we have one hour of light rain a day. Uh, so it's, it's proving uh, that we can manipulate sand temperatures. What we're looking at are the results of this year is by looking at half an hour, one hour, one and a half, two hours of rain, what's the, the optimal uh, amount of rain that we need to give us the best cooling uh, so that we can keep sand temperatures down in a, a healthy range for the eggs. We've just been talking about the um, use of artificial rain, but we can also use shade. And so this is one of our experimental areas for trying to uh, change temperature using shade. Um, and uh, we've got clutches that have been uh, placed up here. These aren't natural nests up here, uh, so that uh, we can look at the effect of the shade on hatching success and things like that. The work at night, of course, with the, the nesting turtles for the tagging of them, we're at the end of the nesting season and, and so there's not many still nesting. And we're now at peak of hatching at the moment, so we're assessing the, the hatching success. And that happens every afternoon uh, on the beach and through the night. This ingestion of marine debris, particularly the plastics, is a pretty new phenomenon. You know, if you, I've made the comment to a few people that thinking back to the early necropsies that I did of, of um, turtles that washed in dead back in the, the late 60s, early 70s, we never saw plastic debris in their gut. Um, and um, now um, we're, we're seeing it quite regularly. Um, a significant number of them are eating the fragments of, of floating plastic um, and it's blocking their gut and, and causing elevated mortality. What I'm finding is that the goalposts keep shifting. That the issues that we started with are behind us and over the decades, new issues crop up. So it's been a continuing challenge to, to address each of the, the new problems as we become aware of them. And um, the research that we've done is so intellectually stimulating. Um, working with the postgrads has, has been a, a real pleasure. Um, seeing them develop and, and um, uh, finding um, novel uh, understandings and, and solutions. Um, and so, um, while I can still enjoy it and, and uh, be making a contribution, um, I'm not thinking any of those dirty words that you perhaps were, were wanting to use, like retirement. That's just not, not on the, the um, cards at the moment while I'm enjoying um, the, the work I do. I've had a long association with the Queensland Museum before I got involved in, in sea turtle studies. I was working with the um, curator of reptiles in those days and then when the museum got the the opportunity to hold the the uh, world science festival here in in queensland i'd uh, developed a see-through incubator that uh, allowed uh, us to be able to watch eggs hatching and so we uh, thought that we could develop that further and then drawing on all of our um, research we'd done on incubation of eggs with temperature dependent sex determination. Um, I could uh, give him a recipe for how we could gather eggs on a, a particular night, incubate them at a particular temperature and have them hatch on the day that he wanted to have eggs hatching in the Queensland Museum uh, for the, the festival. And so we've been doing that each year ever since the, the festival began. It's satisfying. It's uh, a challenge to make it happen. Um, and um, yeah, it makes you feel good that, that you can contribute into this uh, broader education of the public. Um, and um, along with it, there's a whole lot of extra science that, that gets uh, uh, learnt as we go.